Get those fingers moving, it's five Amstrad CPC type-in games. I can feel the viewers tuning out as I said the words in the introduction. But this is vital stuff today because it's easy to do another five, six format US gold or ocean game, big name game, brings in big viewing numbers, not that, that matters on Shinny Vision, not with having any adverts, but the forgotten part of 8-bit history and the unsexy part of it is type-ins. These were a major thing. Magazines lived and died by the quality of their type-ins. And yes, by 87, 88, they have pretty much forgotten about and they became much shorter things in magazines like Program Pit Stop in Your Sinclair. But Amstrad Computer User and Computing with the Amstrad and other magazines for different formats in the earlier days had these massive listings. And today I want to focus on a magazine I know well and have featured on here many times, Amstrad Computer User. And we're going to start with Frantic Freddy from the August 1985 edition. It is 10K in total. What type is your TV or monitor, black or white or colour? It's an Amstrad CPC. It's going to be colour or green screen. Bob Job Freddy thinks he has found an easy job in moving some pot plants from the attic to the cellar of an old house. But poor Freddy is in for trouble because the plants are magical and are guarded by angry ghosts. <laughs> Freddy must hurry back because once the owner comes back, his time is up, although the magical plants give him five lives. OK. OK. Press spacebar to continue. Move Freddy by using the cursor keys or joystick as below. Oh, and you jump to the left and jump to the right. OK, up and down. Down to make Freddy jump to the... OK. More instructions. And we'll go for skill level number one. Oh, I remember this. I had this. I had this. So here we go. I'm Freddy there. I've got to jump. Oh, no, I've been eaten by the user-defined character smiley face from the CPC's basic character set. In fact, all this is from the... Oh, I've been eaten again. There is music, kind of. Oh, here we go. Oh, I can jump. I can jump. Like, oh, I've jumped into the ceiling. Yes, I seem to remember this is the thing, jumping into those blocks on the ceiling. Let's try again. Right, okay, I've jumped over him, jumped up there. It's confusing going up and down to le jump left and jump right. Yeah, the tune is just a few notes really, but it is a tune. Jump, All right. We're nearly there to get the, to get the, to get the plants. Right, okay. Jump up there. Jump. Yay, I've got the magical plants, right. Back down we go to the ground. We've got to do this five times, I think. Oh, I've been eaten. The controls don't respond that well, and the jumping is rather violent. What is my name? Chinny. Why did the level flip round then? Because we start off on the left and then went to the right. So I think I need to turn the collision detection off here to play the game a bit more. So as it's a basic listing, I've gone through the listing and found line 2350, where we've got a line that basically says court equals 1, which I've changed to court equals naught. And that, I think, will mean that I should have collision detection turned off in terms of the ghosts. So let's see what happens. Yep, get the sound effect, because that's in the line, but I'm no longer losing a life. Yep, there we go. I'm such a great hacker. I still don't understand why sometimes the level is flipped left and then right. So the game won a random number generator to decide you're going to get the level one way or the other before it starts. 
but the game does go on like this forever. In fairly enjoyable though for a typing game. From the same edition of Amstrad Computer User August 85, we have Duck Dodgers. Hmm, I wonder what that can refer to. And a fairly conventional listing, although a lot of symbol statements in terms of drawing the graphics using symbols and a few data statements, but not an awful lot. Anyway, let's see what Duck Dodgers actually is. Oh, that's nice and colourful. Copyright 1985, copyright. OK, press a key. Nick Speakman is the coder. We are the famous Duck Dodgers, protector of the universe. Your mission is to rid the water-covered planet Lily Pond of evil Elmer Fudd. He has positioned his troops all over the planet's surface. You must destroy them and also navigate the way, your way through the laser pylons scattered over the planet. OK. A little bit of a pause. It is basic after all. Oh, I'm in a spaceship. OK. Can I shoot? What am I doing? I, I can only go left and right. I'm dead. Right, OK. I go left and right and I shoot and... Oh, the flashing ground that's supposed to simulate movement slows down an awful lot when there are things on the screen. Well, it's, um... As I often say with these type-ins, I've seen worse... Oh, hang on! Line does not exist in 2610. Okay, reloaded. And just to give myself more of a chance, I've gone into the listing given myself 100 lives. So, so far, the only variation I'm seeing is different colour baddies coming up. Oh, hang on, again! That's weird. I keep getting this error. Line does not exist, but it's a different line every single time. Well, I'm not going to be able to see the second part of the game, seemingly. I don't know why it's doing this. Pass. It mistyped listing. I don't know. Graphically, quite ambitious for a basic game, but yeah, I've seen far better in the pages of Amstrad Computer User. Trench, another early one from Amstrad Computer User. And one I had again as a kid on the discs my dad's mate David gave us when we got our Amstrad CPC. You've got to fly there on the trench and six minutes in, you will encounter an event that you must hit dead centre. Hmm, I wonder what this can be based on. Nice description on the listing there tells you what are different bits of the code are actually doing. For example, line 350 checks for joystick movement. Line 370 moves you around. Line 1750 to 1780 does the drawing for when you hit the enemy. So it's an 8K type in. So let's see what it's like. There you go. You are piloting a small X attack craft on a trench towards a vent at its end. Right, OK. And apparently the listing for the trench drawing was actually also uh, a thing in the previous issue. So, oh, there's the X-Wing aircraft coming towards me. It's just like X-Wing, isn't it? Come on, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. So I've got six minutes of this before I get to the end of the trench. Oh, he gets, they get very big when they get... Oh, he's getting even bigger. He's getting even bigger. It looks like the eyes from Dig Dug. Oh, well, that does get slow, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, perhaps I should disappear a bit before then, perhaps. I died then, did I? If you fly too high, you automatically die. Because you get shot by... Oh, dear, yeah. It all falls apart when they get really close to the, the camera, the screen, whatever it is. It's, um, I remember playing this and just eventually getting very, very bored of it. 
because of that slowdown as those enemies get very close to you. But it is nice. It's, the trench drawing is actually just flashing colours. It's flashing colours just to make it all work. It's rather nice. An enjoyable, if different, typing. Professional Lawn Mower Simulator by Jay Dixon incorporating Cliff Lawson's multi-mode. It's a lovely Sunday morning and you are longing for a swim in your new pool before lunch. However, having paid for the pool, you cannot now afford a gardener, so must mow your, mow your lawn first. It is keyboard only, A-Z-O-P. A-Z-O-P? A-Z-O-P. What is this, BBC Micro Game? Q-A-O-P is the only acceptable combination. Possibly Z-X-O-K. So you saw the reference to Cliff Lawson's multi-mode. You'll notice this is mode one on the Amstrad, the four-colour mode. And it's using some clever stuff, uh, clever code by Cliff Lawson at Amstrad to allow more colours on the screen. There's raster interrupts going on. You can pretty much see where they are to get all those extra colours. The uh, controlling of the mower is somewhat challenging. It looks more like a paintbrush or a paint roller. So... I think I've probably already lost, haven't I? Crashed too many times. Lost 15 minutes there. And we have to do it. You can basically only afford to crash about two or three times. Oh, if you want to win the game and swim in the pool. I wonder if the code of this has seen Advanced Law Mower Simulator in your Sinclair. I tried to check the dates of this and I couldn't quite correlate the two. But this is a more advanced game. Uh, professional lawnmower simulator. Advanced lawnmower simulator is just merely going across the screen with your lawnmower. This, you have to avoid the obstacles. Of course, Hover Bother comes to mind. Again, didn't come out on the Amstrad, and that is far better. You can see a little bit of flickering on the raster interrupts. By the way, apologies for the picture jumping occasionally. When I captured this, my RetroTink wasn't quite set up with the new firmware. Let's have a look at the listing. I think all these data statements are to do with the Rast Interrupts Cliff Lawson's thing. Because then we go back into a very standard basic listing. I guess as with all these things, it's more about typing in and learning about basic than the quality of the game. And hey, that raster interrupt thing is rather cool. The game itself, however, is nothing special and rather fiddly to control. Galaxians Revenge. But is it going to be good Galaxians or bad Galaxians? Uh, we're waiting because it's a basic game. It needs to do stuff. Okay, right. What are we getting? Ooh. Okay. Well, I've seen worse commercial releases of Galaxians for a start. Sound effects are authentic ish. So, level four and now quadrant four. And it's getting pretty busy. There's got to be machine code going on in here. The CPC can't shift this kind of thing around in pure basic. There's got to be a bit of machine code by data statements in this. Let's have a look. That's the main listing. But I did see at the top there, it, load, yeah, it loads in another listing, which I suspect has got a substantial chunk of data statements in it. Enjoyed it, though. So that's five Amstrad CPC typing games from Amstrad Computer User. Another crowd piece of Chini Vision. But hey, I enjoyed playing all of these, even if some of the games weren't very good. Frantic Freddy brought back the memories. I had this. And yeah, it's not particularly good. But it's the kind of listing you can get into and start hacking around. I seem to remember I did, and even today, just doing that thing where I didn't lose my lives. Just going through and just finding that little bit was quite satisfying to do. And it... These games are all about learning how to do basic, 
not necessarily the quality of the games. Duck Dodgers, disappointing because it didn't work. It kept on crashing out no matter how often I played it. Every time it would just come up with line does not exist in line whatever. A shame, because I'd like to have seen that second part of the game, but to be honest, the game itself didn't really do it for me. Trench Attack, it's Star Wars in basic on your Amstrad CPC. And there's certainly a few minutes of gameplay there. And the routine for doing the trench is quite nice. And the tutorial in the previous issue of Amstrad Computer User tells you how it's done. But the, the game breaking thing really is the point where the enemy fighters get really close to the screen and just slow down. You have to wait for them to disappear. It's also frustrating that you can't fly more than a third of the way up the screen without being taken out by unseen enemies above. Professional Lawnmower Simulator, well, clever use of the raster interrupts by Cliff Lawson, but the game itself is very, very basic and with slow laggy controls that you just crash into objects. So that's a little bit frustrating. Galaxian's Revenge, wow, it's like that type in Space Invaders game for the CPC I looked at years ago. Perhaps not quite as polished as that, but on some systems, this is commercial quality. As I said at the start, why am I doing a video like this today? Because this is the forgotten genre. And you know, these aren't games that you're gonna necessarily type in or even play, but they do need to be remembered because they are a vital part of 8-bit computing history.